What's up, Liron here, and today we're gonna paint together this scene right here. What's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. And today, as I mentioned, we're gonna paint uh, this scene that you see over here at the back. Um, I already finished, I'm always, always recording my intro after I finished uh, the painting, just to, to make sure that it's worthwhile because you never know what you get with watercolor. But in any case, with this one, I'm very pleased. Um, I think it's a good example of how to get in the, the middle values correctly. Uh, and I'm stopping with the painting, knowing that I could add more, I could improve it, but I just want to stop. Uh, maybe I will develop it further uh, inside, but for now I feel like if I'm going to do something, it's going to ruin it and there's no need to. So in any case, without further ado, let's jump straight into the actual process. Okay, so I'm getting started with the drawing process and I'm really speeding this one up um, because there was a lot of just basic, very basic guidelines being set up. Uh, mostly the thing you want to care about, I guess, in this kind of scene is the perspective. Uh, we have a one point perspective, a winding street. Uh, the point of the point, vanishing point is to the extreme right. Okay, and that's a bit of an unusual composition for me and uh, I think it's one thing that I would have wanted to improve a bit. I I think it works better when it's more towards the center, uh, but not completely, so maybe third, a quarter, something like that. But in any case, now I'm just making sure that everything conforms to that uh, perspective that I set up. Um, putting in some trees here. The good thing about trees is that they don't have to conform to any perspective. You just put them there. Uh, but all the buildings, everything else, uh, it takes some time to getting used to it if you're, you have no experience with perspective drawing. But once you kind of figure out what the sets of parallel lines are, it becomes much easier to see them for what they are and then uh, draw them correctly. And then you know that all the top lines of the buildings are in the street level and um, and even some lines on the cars uh, are on the same plane when it comes to being parallel. Uh, so then you have to put them together. Now I put in this motorcycle that you can even see in the video to the left, uh, not just in the reference photo, um, but that was a bit of a, an odd mistake. Uh, so I think this painting, there, there's a lot of good things about it and a lot of things that I wouldn't do in the same manner today, hopefully. Uh, it's not that old of a process, maybe about a month and a half ago, uh, but sometimes when you're painting outside, there's just a lot going on, which makes it challenging. Uh, what I am very pleased with is how I put in uh, a lot of people, cars, some things that will uh, help the movement, okay? Now some parts of the video are gonna be a bit out of focus, so apologies uh, about that. Um, also, I had uh, a lot of people stop by and talk to me, uh, which uh, I don't mind. Like, I never care about that. I actually really appreciate the fact that someone's interested enough to stop and chat, uh, but it did throw me off of my focus for uh, for a, a, a short while. Um, but uh, hopefully <laughs> the result is still decent at the very least. Um, a lot of it comes down to interp interpreting and simplifying the scene. And if you do a good job at it, then that's a lot. So now I'm starting with the initial wash, putting in the skies, uh, a, a plain phthalo blue for that. Uh, then I put in the buildings. What I don't like is that I used a bit of a lemon yellow here and I shouldn't have. I hate that color and it always hurts my <laughs> inspiration. Uh, but in any case, mix it up with a bit of um, um, a, a reddish, uh, a warm red, so kind of like a cadmium uh, red. So it's a bit of an interesting color combination. Now exploited some wet in wet, uh, and it's time for the second wash. So I'm putting in the tree, leaving some gaps to see the sky through it, uh, but ever so slightly, not too much. Um, I don't worry about that too much, and, and it's all gonna be darker later on. Um, most of it is gonna be shaded, and so, yeah. Uh, so I'm, uh, now I used a bit of uh, paper to dab out the paint that I wasn't pleased with. Um, most mistakes can be fixed if you're fast enough. You can always dab the paint. If it's too light, you can always darken it in a later wash. Um, even if you get the, the death, deathly uh, blossoms, uh, you can always fix that uh, in later washes. So anyway, now I'm starting to set up some shadows for the buildings in the background. Uh, the thing is, they're so far into the background that I didn't want to overdo it. Um, I left a bit of negative painting for a small, small chimney on the rooftop there. Uh, the, the red rooftop is what originally attracted me to the scene uh, in the first place. 
Um, so because all the buildings are really in the background there, I don't want to put in too many details. I want to make sure I avoid that. Um, I want to say a word or two about the materials I'm using. So the brush uh, is a Windsor Newton uh, brush. I forgot the exact name, but you can see it probably if you pause the video as well. Um, and it's a very soft bristle. And unfortunately, I don't like it as much. It's too soft for me. I like the more springy brushes. Uh, most of the paintings I did with this brush didn't end up the way I wanted them to be, uh, which is really funny now that I think about it. There is one painting that I really enjoyed doing with this one and worked out really well, and that is the Santa Claus portrait uh, painting. That was the, the only painting that really I think uh, I'm pleased with that I used this brush for. Uh, so that's probably nothing wrong to say, nothing wrong with the brush. By the way, I sprayed some water to keep the wash alive for a little longer. Uh, it's probably nothing with the brush, it's just my skills in using it that would require improvement. Uh, and also me just learning how to uh, more correctly uh, use it in the right situations. Not just how to use it, but also when to use it. Uh, that was my point. Um, so in any case, now I'm adding some uh, of the shadows there to the left. Uh, this will bring out the, the sh sun that's shining on the, on the wall there and on the building. Um, I'm just trying to read the values as I see them. Where it's dark, I try to get it darker. Uh, I feel like it's a bit flat and boring in terms of the colors and there isn't enough variation for my taste. It's really, it's so funny, some paintings just connect. Like a painting, the painting that I did um, just yesterday, I finished it, uh, of this landscape and of the, sorry, it's a rural uh, view, rural scene, like a European village probably. Um, and that scene really connected and I can't really say that I had more skills when I did it or I was more focused. To, to Actually, it's the contrary. Uh, to the contrary, I was less focused and I was just going on intuition. I uh, wasn't really thinking a lot. And with this one, even when I went on intuition, and even when I was thinking a lot, I feel like there's just things connect on a different level in different paintings. Sometimes you have nothing to do about it, by the way. You just have to go for it. Um, and whatever result you get, then you get it. Um, I will say that a lot still is in the, the way you... Uh, plan out the scene. So the planning will, proper planning will get you far. Uh, if you already know how you're gonna attack, uh, quote unquote, attack the the painting, then you're already off to a good start. And sometimes you don't know and it ends up working, but most of the time you have to n have a general idea of what you want. I would say both the story you want to tell, but also how you're going to layer it. What's going to be the foreground? What's going to be the background, the middle ground? Um, what are the values going to be? What's going to be darker? What's going to be lighter? Here, there's just a lot to correct in the composition and also in the values. I didn't push it to be dark enough. My whole focus was to build it up slowly. But then I started feeling like I, lo I lose focus, so I decided to <clears throat> to quit it and maybe continue it later on. At this stage, someone was talking to me, which is why you see me paint less. Um, we've been talking for like five minutes probably, and this really threw me off of my uh, focus. Uh, so this is why I think I wasn't able to nail that area uh, as much as I wanted it to. I just feel like there's there are areas of strong contrast and then areas where the values are a little off. Uh, but in any case, yeah, the um, paper I'm using, as always, is Saunders Waterford. Uh, the brush you're seeing now is my Princeton brush. It's a size 12. One of my favorite brushes for getting in uh, smaller details because it has a really nice tip and it has a strong spring to it. And uh, it started to lose its tip recent recently, which makes sense. I've been using it for like three years now. Uh, so that's perfectly acceptable. Um, so maybe it'll be time to replace it soon. Uh, so that's that. Uh, paper Saunders Waterford, as I mentioned, 300 grams, meaning uh, uh, not the thinnest, but not the heaviest. Now the camera is out of focus, but hopefully that'll, that segment will <laughs> pass soon. Uh, apologies about that. And it's actually a part that I really like with uh, shading the tree. Um, that's probably happening because of the light. Um, the light moving very sharply and, and cause the camera to go f and focus on that like motorcycle. If you want to see the motorcycle to the left, now is a good opportunity to do that because all the because it's really sharp. Um, 
so yeah, about that, um, I, I wanted to talk a bit about the paints I'm using here. Uh, it's a very large mix. There's a lot of Schmincke in this uh, palette. Uh, also some Daniel Smith, uh, a bit of St. Petersburg. Uh, the blue is St. Petersburg. Um, so, so I like to just choose the colors that I enjoy and then the brand doesn't matter as much to me. Uh, with time I learn what combinations work for me, what combinations I don't enjoy as much. Um, and so that's the main thing. Now notice, even when it's blurry, you can see the contrast between the roof uh, and the tree is way too strong. So uh, it's either darkening the rooftop, the red rooftop I'm talking about, um, or lightening up the tree or somehow m merging them. But there is a very strong, sharp shape there that shouldn't be there. Uh, now let me give you a really good advice, I think, a piece of advice that really helps me. Uh, and that is with every painting you do, usually there is one place that worked out the way you wanted it to. And I think if you can locate that and use that as inspiration to get you to the next one, that's really useful. For me, the entire leftmost section of the painting really works. The two trees there, compositionally, they look good, they look interesting. The way they cast their shadows on the fence looks good and looks interesting. The way they create depth with the stairs behind and the building looks really good in my opinion. So uh, if you can find one thing that you like about the painting, that can give you a lot of motivation for the next one and then you start feeling good about it. I have so many paintings from the past where I really messed things up, but uh, I can find one area, one small corner, one small place where I do feel like they connected well uh, and, and, and things do work. And it's it maybe just a small, small sp space or area. And then you can grab onto that and say, oh, okay, so here it worked out really nicely. So there is some magic here. Uh, how do I recreate that for the rest of the painting? Um, so yeah, and don't worry about it. It, it takes tons of time. I'm, I've been at it for five years now and I still learn so much every single day. Uh, it's like there's a lot of stuff I don't know. Uh, one thing I'm very happy with is how the people turned out here because they were actually influenced by people I saw in the scene. I wasn't winging it like sometimes happens uh, where I work a little... Um, you know, I just go on autopilot mode and paint Alvaro Castanet style people. That happens to me often. But here I was really on top of it and I was really doing it the way I wanted it to, uh, to be. Um, what else? I had another point regarding the people. Yeah, well, that's just another part that really works out. I think if you crop out the entire left half of the painting, it works out much better. Uh, so here I put a bit of uh, red details on the rooftop. It was actually very prominent if you were there in the scene. Uh, I also felt like the foreground needed some darkening, so I sprayed some water, put in some uh, paint, connected it to the shadow uh, of the car. Uh, and now we're really close to finishing this. The one thing that really st is starkingly bold is the difference between the tree and the rooftop uh, that I would really want to uh, fix, maybe in the future. So here's the final result. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this process. Uh, there's a lot to learn from here. And with that being said, let's wrap it up. So this is it, friends. Let me show you what I got here is uh, the final uh, result. And I'm going to uh, turn my camera and uh, give you a better look. Uh, very pleased with this process. Let me show you what I got. Okay, so here's the final thing. Now, I do uh, stop this knowing that I could probably add a little more, uh, add a little more mid-values, a little more darkness here. Uh, but I feel like uh, I'm both losing my uh, attention span because I've been here for a while now uh, and everything changed a bit so uh, the light uh, so what I'm planning on doing is maybe 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 develop this one into a better or more finalized uh, piece uh, back home at the studio uh, but in any case here let me give you a better closer look I'm really pleased with how these trees came out uh, I like the composition I think again there's there is stuff to work on. This area feels a little empty to me, but still I feel like this is a, a good progress. So happy overall. Here's the, the improvisation I told you about, the click and go cup. Um, here's my palette, my brush. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me wrap up uh, this uh, video. Okay, so sorry about the sloppy camera work. I'm just a bit tired. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this process. Um, again, I feel like there's a lot to learn here and I feel like it's, things connected the way I wanted them to. Uh, maybe a bit more work on composition and uh, even adding more details to this large a scene. 
Uh, but in any case, really pleased with it. Uh, I want to thank you so much for watching and I'm, I really appreciate your support. Uh, if this is the first video of me you watched, then definitely check out my other videos. I have tons of other uh, processes and tutorials like this one um, and also uh, a lot of them outside, uh, which I know a lot of people are a bit shy about. So I definitely recommend you give it a shot. Uh, you don't have to record it like I do uh, and do it in the extreme mode, but you can just do it and uh, enjoy yourself and don't care about what other people think about your painting. Um, so in any case, uh, this is it. I just wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart and I would really, really appreciate it uh, if you leave a comment below and let me know uh, what else you want me to do, what types of videos, what other uh, playlists you want me to do more of um, because I do try and get out the content that you will enjoy, okay? This is really important for me and I'm slowly but surely growing the channel and growing an Instagram as well and the more I do things that you enjoy, the more I will grow. So I want to thank you for that uh, and with that we'll wrap it up uh, and I will see you again in another vid real soon. Fly!